Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 187 going over speculation and investment for April 2015. We've had a lot of crazy news this last month. Things have been up and down. Let's jump right in. In Vintage, I'm still recommending that people pick up Mishra's workshops. They're running about five to 600 right now and they're disappearing off of everybody's sites. The value on these is incredible. They are as powerful if not more powerful than the Moxen. You need four of them in a deck. I see these easily being a $750 to $1,000 card in the next few months. There's so few of these out there, and people who want to play them in Vintage need four. They're also legal in EDH. There are some really cool artifact decks that would be happy to have one of these. If you're going to get one, now's the time to grab one. Monastery Mentor, who I told people to stay away from originally when it came out, has finally dipped low enough that I recommend picking it up. It is a very solid card in Modern and in Legacy. It's even good in Vintage. It's down at the $15 range. Yes, it could end up going a little bit lower because it's not seeing much play in Standard, and Standard is what drives the prices of new cards, but long term, this has got a trajectory to go back up to be $30 plus. So get in sometime between now and maybe the $12 low point it could hit, and you will be happy to have these long term. There are so many good older decks with this card. I'm taking a second here to talk about one of my favorite sites out there on the internet. It's MTG Stocks. They do a weekly post on the winners, which are cards that have really jumped up in price. And as you'll notice, I use some of their visualizations here. I have no affiliation with them. They're just an incredibly cool site. Definitely check them out. If you follow Magic Finance, this should be one of your bookmarked sites. These are two smaller cards that I really recommend getting into currently. Thought Scour is showing up in a lot more decks because of Delve specifically. Delve is a really, really powerful mechanic. This common is very easy to pick up and trade for, both at the 50 cent level for them or the $10 foil level. This combos really well with things like Tassiger. Also, start looking for your foil sideboard cards for modern. Rakdos Charm is a primary example of that. Rakdos Charm is playable in Legacy and in modern, and foils are really low right now. Long term, these have potential huge upsides. The next two cards that I'm recommending people pick up do have a potential downside to them. So I've got this new icon here, the high risk icon. These are cards that are not on the reserve list. I don't see any reason for them to be reprinted anytime soon. Counterbalance could be in Modern Masters too, but I don't think they'll reprint it because it's not relevant to modern. I think they're more likely to save it to be a judge foil. Long term, I see this card as a card that could make it up to the $40 or $50 range. And Cobble Therapy has been reprinted several times and continues to have significant value. I'm not so sure about this icon here. If there's any fans of the channel that are willing to create a cool looking high risk icon that says something about high risk and high reward, that would be really cool. I'm looking for some way to show that with kind of a magic theme to it. Any ideas, I greatly appreciate it. Back onto speculation here. Council's Judgment is amazingly cheap right now. $8 for one of the best removal cards out there. It is fun in EDH and it's a powerhouse in Legacy. Very reasonable time to pick it up. Damnation is probably going to be my most controversial of the buys on this buy list because it could be in Modern Masters 2015, but it was just announced as a judge promo. I don't think we're going to see it for a while. Lots of people really like this card as a casual card. It's great in EDH. I'm trading for them currently. In Legacy and in Commander, Sudden Demise and True Name Nemesis are also really low right now. Sudden Demise is a great sideboard card that helps you deal with uh, angels from miracles, helps you deal with any type of a swarm or token-based stack. Very good against elves, very solid card, and it's only been printed in Commander. True Name Nemesis Really great card, really low price tag right now. I like it a lot in Tiny Leaders and in Legacy. Modern Masters, a lot of people have asked me, what should you pay for a box? Well, I would pay retail for boxes currently. 
I've pre-ordered them at the retail price. The print run may not be as large as people had thought, or the print run is going to be staggered over several months. So you could see some price inflation over the first month of the boxes. I know a few stores that have already started to ask over retail on them. I do not expect to see these down below the 200 level, and they've disappeared off of places like eBay at the 210, 220 range already. I would go to your local game store as soon as possible and try to lock it in at retail. Now this is the most difficult part of this video. Deciding what is going to come up in Modern Masters. I did a whole video trying to predict what the mythics would be. There was a spoiler, uh, unofficial leak earlier this week that had people really excited, but it already got some things wrong. It listed Splinter Twin as mythic, which I thought it would be, although it was confirmed at the rare level. All of these other cards here were in that same supposedly very reputable leak. I am selling them. I believe that most of these cards will be in there. As soon as you find out, though, these guys could drop with the exception of Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant's a fan favorite. Even if it's not getting played, it tends to maintain its value. Everything else here, though, is going to take a short-term hit. And it's worth picking up several months from now, but not right now. These have already been confirmed, and V-Click is definitely on the sell, and Splinter Twin is on the sell. You may even have missed the windows for those. With regards to Emrakul, Karin, and Tarmogoyf, I'm actually saying hold on to them. We're going to see small dips, but long term they have potential to be higher than they are, or higher than you can get out of them if everybody else is dumping them. I'm going to start trading here in the next month for Karin's, Emrakul's, and Tarmogoyf's. Dig Through Time is another high risk card here. It's a powerhouse in Legacy. There are several decks that are exploiting it. I am picking it up because I really like the card, and I don't think the card is overpowered, but the risk here is that it could get banned in Legacy. And if it does get banned, it's going to drop. Jump in at your own risk. I am definitely one of the people who is taking the risk on Dig Through Time. Snapcaster Mage is at a solid $50. It's going to be higher. Snapcaster Mage is so good in Legacy and in Modern, and we're looking at another 12 to maybe 24 months before we see a Snapcaster reprint. This guy can reach 75 to 100, no problem, especially since he's blue. Blue adds significant value to cards. Tazigur is still really underpriced. You can find him at the six, seven, eight dollar range. I am playing him more often than Tarmogoyf now in Legacy and in Modern. Pick up the foils also. They're about twenty to thirty dollars right now. Really reasonably priced. Pendlehaven took a huge jump recently. It's played in Infect. This is crazy high. Even the non-original legends are up around this $14 range. Definitely sell or get out of them. Could be reprinted at any time and will likely be reprinted at an uncommon level. Spellskite, I had put on this sell list about a week ago when I was starting to build these slides and then yesterday it was spoiled. One of the other things MTG Stocks does is it points out what are the highest overall prices for particular cards, and Spellskite was at an all-time high. Another reason to check out the MTG Stocks page if you're interested in Magic Finance. Last month, I told people to buy your Dragon Lords, especially Salungar. This month, I'm telling people to sell your Dragon Lords, especially Salungar and Ojitai. They're really high right now. They may see a reprint in a dual deck, uh, they're casual, fun cards. Wizards has high incentive to print these again and make sales out of them. Lots of these boxes are going to get cracked as the value of the Mythics has increased. Now is the time to get out of these. If you want them later, wait for them to rotate out of standard, especially as a casual player. These have little to no playability in Modern and Legacy. Maybe a little bit of edge as a one of or two of in certain decks. Deathmiss Raptor is another one that I would sell. 
Although, watch your modern list. If he starts to get played in modern, he might have a little more long-term potential in value. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a speculation and investment video. Anybody who wants early access to these slides, please become a patron over on Patreon. Also, if you become a patron at the $5 or above level, I am sending people uh, the new angel token that has been done for the channel. I've got a whole video coming up on this token. Super cool. It goes along with your pack opening for the month and your name in the credits. Thank you, everybody who's making the channel possible. And thank you to Sam Kaiser, the artist on those angel tokens. I look forward to highlighting them in an upcoming video.